Hello, and welcome to Impact the Borough, a podcast from the Greensboro Chamber of Commerce. I'm Brent Christensen, President and CEO of the Greensboro Chamber of Commerce. Each week, a Chamber staff member will sit down with a guest to discuss what we're doing to start and grow businesses, create quality jobs, develop our workforce, and tell the inspiring story of Greensboro to the world. Before we get into this week's episode, we have some news. We're excited to welcome Truliant Federal Credit Union as the presenting sponsor for Impact the Borough. As one of the largest credit unions in North Carolina, Truliant is proud of its work supporting the businesses and the people that make our communities thrive. Chartered in 1952, today Truliant serves more than 250,000 members, helping them and our community build strong financial foundations. There are five locations in Guilford County to serve you. Visit truliant.org for more information. Today, you'll learn about Capital Connects, a signature event from Launch Greensboro that's coming up in March. Launch Greensboro is the entrepreneurial arm of the chamber. It provides programming, mentoring, and access to capital to folks who are starting and growing their businesses right here in our community. Your host is Jennifer Hensel, the assistant director of Launch Greensboro. Jennifer is from the Rocky Mountain West area of Colorado, but she's called North Carolina home for three years. She has a background in politics and nonprofit management. Hello, Jen. Hey, and I'm happy to be here with Ryan Pratt, the 2013 winner of Capital Connects. Uh, Ryan, do you want to tell us a little bit about your background? Sure. So I uh, graduated from NC State in 2000 with a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering. Uh, went to work for uh, RF Micro Devices, a company that's here in town. Um, my, which, incidentally, my father, Bill Pratt, co-founded. Um, I'm sure that had nothing to do with me getting the job. Mm-hmm. And then after uh, working there for eight years, working my way through um, up to technical manager, I opened a new product development center for Skywork Solutions here in Greensboro. Um, and then in 2013, left Skyworks to found Gorilla RF. So Gorilla RF makes uh, semiconductors, microchips for wireless applications. Our products are used in um, devices like Wi-Fi access points, uh, cell towers that you see kind of by the highway. Um, We're in automobiles now, uh, so shark fin antennas on the roof of many vehicles. We have chips in those. And so what our, our chips do is they're amplifiers. So they take a little electrical signal and make it big um, and help uh, either receive a very distant signal um, that's very soft, kind of like a hearing aid, or they help transmit um, a big signal like a megaphone. Well, um, I'm going to frame up a little bit of today's conversation for those um, who aren't necessarily in the entrepreneurial world. I'm going to give them a little bit of scope of what we're talking about today. We are um, really showcasing one of our signature events, which is called Capital Connects. And so I get um, emails all the time asking about this event. So I'm going to go over a couple FAQs to help give everyone some context. So um, what is a pitch competition? Capital Connects is a pitch competition for us. And we We really see pitch competitions as an opportunity for startups to tell their story, for investors to hear about their companies, Um, you know, and you may be able to speak to this experience later. It can be hard when you're you, you know, have your head down and you're building a company, when you finally look up and decide that you need to look for capital, where to go and how to build those relationships. And so our particular event's goal is to um, be the meeting place for entrepreneurs and investors to begin that relationship and have those conversations. Um, so really for kind of people outside the entrepreneurship world, think of Shark Tank, but without the cameras or the celebrities. And um, the other thing I think it's important for people to know is they think about pitch competitions because there are so many regionally and nationally is um, you have to be really prepared to clearly articulate what it is you're trying to do. And um, a lot of pitch competitions have question and answer sessions. Ours happens not to. Um, But so it's really about the entrepreneur making sure that they know the ins and outs of their business, right? Um, Another question we get asked all the time is what makes a good pitch? And I'm going to ask you to chime in on this in a bit. But we talk a lot about Um, identifying a real problem that real people have, communicating your solution, identifying your customer, and telling the community, particularly investors, what it is you need. What do you think makes a great pitch? Um, No, I'd agree with that. I think it it needs to be quick. 
um, you know, at least the elevator pitch part of it. And certainly this format, you need to be able to, uh, as you said, very quickly communicate what the problem is, how you're solving it, and who you're solving it for. Um, I think a lot of times uh, investors are also, at the end of the day, they're, they're looking to find out how are they going to make money off of investing in your company. And so they want to understand what the size of the problem is, what the potential um, for the company is in terms of exit, how big could it get. Um, you know, is it scalable? Is it, you know, um, you know, just a restaurant or is this a business that could, you know, grow into hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars? Um, you know, and certainly there are many different kinds of businesses and, you know, I think they're all wonderful. Um, it's just some are more, uh, appropriate for investors than others. Absolutely. And, and that's one of the other questions that we get is what kinds of companies make sense to apply and present a Capital Connects? And, and we say that if you're looking for a seed round, if you are looking for capital, or if you're an early stage company who has growth potential to scale and seek capital in the future, then it's a great time to apply. And, and our panel of judges will decide, you know, if the company makes sense right now at the stage that it's at. Um, but, you know, just to kind of round back into what makes a good pitch, I would add a few things that, that I coach entrepreneurs on when they're practicing their pitch. And it's really about making sure that they have clarity around their business, but also enthusiasm, um, utilizing data to make sure that their um, their problem solution, market size are all very clear, um, and to really showcase a roadmap, like you said, so that that exit and the strategy to get there is clear for the audience. Um, and then to really just tell a story, to do it in a way that is compelling for the audience to listen to. In a competition like ours and like in many, your, your audience audience is listening to pitch after pitch after pitch. It can be an hour plus of listening to other people's um, stories. And so you want to make it a really compelling thing. So that's what we talk about with entrepreneurs. Um, And so I want to kind of get a little bit of insight into your experience with Capital Connects. This event has been going on for nearly 20 years. And what year did you participate? Uh, The fall of 2013. Okay. And tell us a little bit about your experience. What led you to apply for it and how was it? Sure. Um, So I left Skyworks at the beginning of 2013. Uh, I spent the first few months trying to figure out what my next job was going to be. Um, I was looking for, you know, somebody to hire me Mm -hmm. to to do what I I knew I wanted to do. Um, And of course, that didn't go so well. It was, um, there were many jobs out there I could get, but Um, They weren't doing what I was passionate about doing. Um, And so finally, you know, with some encouragement from my wife, from my father, um, you know, they really encouraged me to, hey, if if you know what you want to do and there's demand for it, why don't you start your own company? Um, So probably around April of 2013, I decided, okay, Um, I'm going to do this. I had convinced myself I I knew how to do it. And so I spent the rest of that spring and summer uh, coming up with a business plan, figuring out what was our uh, marketing plan, go-to-market plan, um, talking with some potential customers, uh, working on beginning to work on prototypes for products, um, looking, talking with investors, beginning to start relationships, um, talking with any advisor here locally I could find, um, you know, and that was kind of when I began my engagement with the chamber. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I did that, what is it, the launch program, I think? Mm-hmm. Something like that. It was over that summer. It was like one of the first programs. Yeah, it was our lab program, I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it, gosh, there were only like five, maybe four companies. Um, but anyway, I participated in that over the summer. And then at the end of the summer, um, I applied for an NC IDEA grant. Mm-hmm. Um, that ended up working out very well. Um, and then in amongst doing that, the Capital Connects came up. Um, I knew uh, I'd networked and so I knew several people that were going to be there. So I applied, Mm -hmm. um, to be in that and I was chosen. Um, when the day came, um, I, I can't remember, I was in the, the quick pitch program. So I think, I swear it was like one minute. Mm 
is literally what we had. They had a timer, flashcards, everything. Mm -hmm. It was one minute, and you had that long to get all these things across, right, Mm -hmm. of your company's idea, the problem, how you're going to solve it, you know, the potential. Um, And so I kind of started with my NC idea pitch, which was much longer, and I just whittled it down. And so that's what I ended up uh, delivering that night. Um, You know, again, I I think Capital Connects, I I ended up winning the pitch competition, and I still (laughs) am not sure how because it felt to me like my pitch wasn't that great, but apparently it was okay. Um, but the real value for me that night was networking. Uh, mm-hmm. There were so many people there, the investors, um, you know, uh, I think advisors that were there. Uh, the people I met that night were by far uh, the most valuable part of the experience. Of course, winning was very cool, um, and that definitely helped. Um, and then, uh, I think within a few weeks of winning that, um, we won the NC Idea Grant. We were finalists there. And so those two things put together, uh, they really ended up being very firm proof points for a lot of the investors we had been talking to where they were interested. But, you know, I think a lot of investors, uh, they 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 want additional proof points, right? And so it, it gave us a lot of credibility, having one Capital Connects, having one an NC Idea grant. Um, and so I think that was in November. Uh, we won the NC Idea grant late November, and then by end of January, we had raised a million dollars. Wow. Um, so that all came together in the two months after Capital Connects. So there's no doubt it, it made a huge impact for us. Um, and again, I think the... The process of really focusing in on the core message helped a lot. Um, We were able to develop a story, as you said, and get investors excited about it. And then we were given the stage to do that on. Right. And so was Capital Connects your first public pitch? Yes. What an interesting timeline for that to have happened for you to, you know, build a business over a summertime, pitch for the first time, meet with investors, win a grant finalize a seed round. I mean, that's really an incredibly quick turnaround for a business, quite frankly. Yeah, it it was very quick. Um, But don't forget, I started working on it all the way back in, you know, March and Mm -hmm. April. And so there was a lot of work put in leading up to that. Um, And, uh, you know, that I, I think enabled us to be as successful as we were. But yeah, uh, it happened very quickly. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we talk about that a lot with the startups that we work with um, through Launch Greensboro is no overnight success is actually an overnight success. There is a lot of work and foundation that has to be built to get to that point where you can kind of start talking to investors and really start having some some traction in that area. Um, going back to the experience of Capital Connects, what did it feel like? Again, this was the first time. What did it feel like to be on stage and to be surrounded by other competent entrepreneurs um, kind of in that environment? It was terrifying. Um, it was, there were a lot of people in that room and, you know, being an engineer, um, I'm not exactly an extroverted uh-huh. personality. Um, and so getting up in front of all those people, trying to remember, you know, the, the one minute pitch, mm-hmm. um, it, was, it was very intimidating. But as soon as, you know, at the same time, there's a reason you're there, right? You're not there because you like hanging out in front of big groups of people. <laughs> Um, you're there because you want to make your business successful. And if you have the drive to do that, um, you can somehow just kind of pull that out. And so once it was my turn and I started going, I uh, just <laughs> kind of went on autopilot. You know, mm-hmm. I had practiced and practiced and practiced. Um, and I was passionate about mm-hmm. the story and I really wanted to put it out there. And so that's kind of how I was able to overcome, um, you know, just the, the, the angst of, you know, being in front of all those people. Um, you know, and the big thing for me was I was just so glad when it was over. Mm-hmm. I, it felt like just getting through it and having done a, a decent job was plenty reward. Mm-hmm. Um, because I was, I was pretty proud of myself once I was finally done with it because that was not, 
uh, something I'd ever done, you right. know, in my life before, certainly not in my career. Right. And um, I think it's it's interesting that you're not necessarily a, a you wouldn't self-describe as a great public speaker. I think you are. And, and um, <clears throat> I think it's interesting that we, we do work with a lot of entrepreneurs who are experts in their field and are so good at what they're doing. Um, but there is a part of entrepreneurship that requires you to push outside your boundaries and your comfort zone. And for you, that was public, you know, public speaking in a pitch mm-hmm. competition. Um, for other people, it can be other things, cold calls or whatever it might be. But how interesting it was for you to, to have the success. And again, as we talked about, kind of build some of that momentum. Um, I wonder if, um, were there any, were there any hard times in the last couple of years where you were able to look back on that experience and leverage some of the success that you had there or that you felt at that moment to help propel you forward? Sure, sure. Um, you know, anyone <laughs> that started a business uh, is going to hit some very rough patches, um, you know, and certainly we've had our share um, but I, I think it is, it's always helpful to be able to look back and just say, you know, look, look at all the obstacles overcome. Um, you know, and for me, that was an obstacle, getting mm-hmm. up, speaking in front of those people, putting out a coherent message. Um, and so being able to say, you know, look, I look at all the things we've done, look how far we've come. Um, you know, I, I think that is very encouraging to get you through. Uh, some of the other tough times that come along, you know, running out of money, <laughs> you know, <laughs> certainly, point, yeah. yeah, we were, we were down to one week's worth of cash at one point. So tell um, me more about how you overcame that. I mean, definitely <clears throat> I want to, I want to get to the point where we've gotten you past this competition and we learn mm-hmm. more, but tell me just right now about some of the, I mean, that particular time period, you had one week's worth of expenses. Sure. Yeah. So, um, you know, in, in our industry, we have a very long sales cycle, which means mm-hmm. um, you can't just launch a product and be receiving revenue in a month. Um, it takes about two to three years to go from first prototypes to actually collecting revenue on a product. Mm. Um, and so uh, we needed very patient investors who were willing to wait that time out. Um, and, you know, fortunately we found them, but we got in a pickle in early 2018 where the revenue looked like it was going to be coming and it just kept pushing out. And so the money was getting lower, lower, lower. Okay. Any day now, the revenue, the orders are going to come in. And then finally it was like, okay, no, (laughs) they're not going to come in. We need more money. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, you know, I had to go back to our investors with, uh, you know, my hat, my hand and just say, look, we're almost there. We've got the products. We've got the customers. Uh, we believe the orders are close. Um, and, you know, fortunately, our investors were, again, very understanding um, and were able to come through with mm-hmm. the money we needed to make it. Um, but, yeah, that was tough because, at the time, we had about 20 employees, and you know that if these investors don't come through, um, you know, they're they're not going to have a job in a week. Um, and I'm pretty transparent with my staff. Um, I, I told them up front, look, if you don't want to know this stuff, cover your ears, but here's what's going on. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and, and that helped a lot, I think. Um, they were able to be in the struggle with me. Mm -hmm. Um, And that was neat to see how we pulled together as a team. You know, we got creative, cutting costs, um, and and made it through that. So it wasn't just the investors that kind of bailed us out. Um, The team was able to really pull together. Um, But that's one, you know, now um, I think we were talking this morning, we were talking in a meeting about how, uh, we did two million dollars last quarter, and that's kind of disappointing. But in the next breath, I said, "Yeah." And a year ago, we were excited about a three hundred thousand dollar quarter. Mm-hmm. So in one year, that's how far we've come. Um, and so it, it's interesting to look back at all those things we've been through, um, and it really has built our team much stronger. I think that 
that entire example that you just gave is such a reflection of you as a leader in terms of being um, transparent with your staff and and bringing people on board, but also having the authenticity and the the confidence to go back to your investors and say, here is where we are. You're in this with me. We need to come up with a solution. Um, you know, I, I think it would be, um, there would be a tendency to try to hide that and to try to play as though everything is going great and mm-hmm. everything is successful when in reality, as you said, there's always going to be ups and downs. And so to have the, um, again, the leadership style that you have of, of being really just kind of upfront and maybe that's your engineering brain, just being upfront and saying, this is it. So we got to solve this problem. Um, but how interesting. And so w- the other thing that leads me to think ab- about is the relationship that you had to have with those investors. It was, it was not just transactional they're giving you money and eventually you're going to return that money. I mean, we talk about Capital Connects being a connect point for people to build relationships. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the process, the truly like lifting the veil and what does it mean to have a phone call with an investor? What does it mean to have a meeting with an investor? No, great question. I, I think so, you know, getting a little more specific, some of the, the folks I met at Capital Connects, um, and began some some of those discussions even before. Um, it, again, I, I would say it was networking. Um, you know, so I met uh, Dennis Stearns, mm-hmm. uh, who was uh, very active in the startup part of the chamber back then. I think mm-hmm. he still is. Yeah. Um, you know, I met Dennis at Capital Connects. Um, I met some of the Piedmont Angel Network who were active back then, folks there. Um, and so with Piedmont Angel Network, for example, um, you know, met with them, kind of showed them some of, uh, you know, what what we were doing, showed them our business plan, things like that, ended up getting invited to pitch to their group. Um, you know, I, that went pretty well. Um, so then they were willing to make an investment, but there was kind of a, a long, drawn-out negotiation. Mm. Um, they ended up being our lead investor for that first round. Um, in the meantime, uh, Dennis Stearns uh, introduced me to some people he knew. Uh, just, you know, over lunch, met with uh, one or two of them. Um, and, and really, I think what I've learned is when these people invest in you, um, yes, they, they want a good story. They want to see how they're going to make their money. But at the end of the day, they need to be able to trust you. And you've got to be authentic, transparent, very clear with them um, because they're all, if they're in a position to be an investor, they're probably a very smart person. They've probably been exactly where you are. Um, And that's why, you know, I'm very proud all the money we've raised has been from uh, angel investors. They're other entrepreneurs. We haven't taken any institutional money from venture capital or anything like that. Um, Not that there's anything wrong with that. It's just with angel investors, I I feel like um, you you get a little more leeway, a little more patience Mm. because they understand. Mm. Um, They've been through in many cases, what, what we're going through. Um, and so it's just, you know, conversation to conversation. It's again, a lunch conversation, a coffee conversation. Here's what we're doing. Here's how much we're raising. Um, here are the terms of a deal. Um, keep being a very proactive communicator with them. Um, and you know, and I, I think that's really for me how, raising the money was. It was all these different conversations, pulling people together, um, getting soft commitments, then hard commitments to how much money they would put in. Um, And then all in the meantime, in the background, working with Piedmont Angel Network as a lead investor uh, to do the due diligence. And then when Pan finally came through, um, all the other investors kind of rolled in with them to make Mm -hmm. it one big deal, our our Series A round. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so we're talking a lot about money right now, and, and let's let's back those numbers down just a little bit and talk about, um, at Capital Connects, it, we call it a competition, and there is a winner, and you won your year. Um, and the prize package that we have for this upcoming year is 7500 for the top prize. We have um, a fan favorite award for 1000 and then we also have for that early, early stage round, the lightning round, um, a $1,500 prize package. So 
looking back, that doesn't seem like a lot of money, but at the very beginning of a company, that can be really helpful in, in you know, moving you forward. What did you do with the prize money that you guys won? How did you execute <laughs> with that money and make it work for you? Sure, sure. Well, back then, they, we didn't get prize money. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. I got a one-year free Microsoft, uh, what was it, uh, Microsoft Office 365 <laughs> subscription. Okay. That was my reward. Um, and I did get to go to a seminar um, by a, a business speaker. That was kind of cool, okay. actually. Um, but that was it. There was no cash back then. So, uh, folks, today... We the ante. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're very fortunate. Um, but, yeah, it, it doesn't always need to be huge amounts of money. Um, I, I think for proof of concept, early stage, you want to keep it as cheap as you can. Um, things like buying a laptop. Um, in in my you know industry, we need CAD software. CAD software isn't cheap. It's about five to ten thousand um, dollars. Sending out you know I'm in a hardware business, so sending out to have prototypes manufactured uh, that was about thirty thousand mm-hmm. um, dollars. Getting a lawyer to file patents that's ten. Fifteen thousand mm-hmm. um, dollars, and so that's where things like NCI idea uh, we got fifty thousand dollars from that, um, you know. And had we been able to get money from Capital Connects as well, uh, that money can go a long way. And it, at least when you're early stage, you need to think about how you can efficiently use that money to um, really prove the the. I, I guess what's the right word? I, I would say prove that your business is possible. Mm-hmm. Um, prove that you have a problem and you have the solution. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it does take that early little bit of capital to get to that validation point and, and start you know some of that momentum. So we've talked a lot about what it felt like to be on one side of Capital Connects, which is as, as a presenting company. But you have since come back year after year and been in the audience. You've been a judge for our organization mm-hmm. for this particular event before. So tell us what that experience is like hearing all these other companies pitch. Um, and, and what keeps you coming back to listen? Sure, sure. Well, I'll tell you, it's a lot more fun to judge than it is to pitch. (laughs) I'm sure. Um, At least for me. Um, No, I I think it's interesting to hear all these different ideas. Um, You know, this is a very creative area. There's a lot of very smart people um, with new ideas. And I I think it's just, it's interesting to me. Um, Since I've started my company, I've just kind of become interested in general in business. You mm-hmm. know, I when we go to a restaurant, I'm like, man, I wonder how much revenue they're clearing a night. What's mm-hmm. their gross margin? <laughs> you know, it's it, things like that. It's just very different in me. And I really enjoy hearing these pitches. Um, again, I think there's a lot of really interesting ideas that are also very, very different from what we're doing, right? Mm-hmm. I, I live and breathe semiconductors. And there's so much more going on out there. Um, so that's neat. And I, I think it's also just interesting to see, um, you know, people get passionate about these things. What do you wow. think it, it means for our city and for the triad to have an event like this? I think it's very important. Um, you've The community, one thing I've learned is for a startup company to be successful, you've got to have a community helping you. Um, And there's no way we would have gotten where we have without um, mentoring, coaching, um, just general community well-wishing, even a little bit of cheerleading. Um, You know, certainly the capital is the lifeblood. Um, And so if you're in a community that doesn't have access to any of that stuff, um, the obstacles are already so enormous for starting a successful company. Um, if your community can't help you out, I, I just don't see how it's possible to succeed. It, it would be extremely, even more rare, I think, without that support. Mm, that's that's great to hear that the event has impact beyond, you know, just just the, the one year you're in it. As you've talked about, it's kind of impacted your company over time. Um, so we're going to have somewhere between 12 and 15 companies pitching on March 4th at the 2020 event. Do you have any advice for those companies? <laughs> um, not, not beyond what we've already said. I, I think, 
again, um, you know, depending on the format and the rules, I, I think, as you said, telling a story is very good. Um, you know, one thing I found that you mentioned earlier uh, that was very helpful for us was in our pitch um, presenting milestones, mm-hmm. kind of with this funding we can do that, then the next step is this, and then B, and then C. Um, I think that's very helpful, so make sure that's in there. Um, and I, I think just being clear, again, as you said, about what the problem is and how you're solving it and how it's scalable is um, very, very important. Um, but, yeah, no, I, I look forward to some good, enthusiastic presentations. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm really excited. And I'm going to get to the website to tell people how you get tickets to the event. But um, do you have any parting words for entrepreneurs who see you as a shining example and Gorilla RF as a shining example that you can build a big company and stay local? Um, yeah, I mean, you can do it. It's, <laughs> it's, it's very difficult, um, but it's possible. And it takes a lot of tenacity and a little bit of luck, um, but it, it is possible. And on those tough days, um, you know, just rally and keep at it because they will come. Um, it it is never as easy as it looks, and uh, you know, and it, it feels when things are not going well you feel like completely alone and isolated and just realize uh, there's a whole community out there and uh, things get better. And uh, there's always, you know, a, a, a good resolution to the problem. So I think just being tenacious and um, keep at it. And we talk all the time about entrepreneurship being a part of economic development. We talk about job growth and about building our own economy from within, and Guerrilla RF has has done that um, under your leadership. And so just leave us, for those who don't know enough about your company, leave us with some of those really exciting statistics. How much have you raised in capital? How many people do you employ? Again, listeners, think about this started six years ago, Mm -hmm. right? Sure. So we've raised, I've around 11 to 12 million in capital, um, almost all of it local. Um, as of today, we have 33 employees. Um, last year in 2019, um, we did right around $7 million in revenue. And, um, you know, we've come a long way. Um, we, we quadrupled revenue in 2019 over 2018. And, um, you know, we're hoping to at least double again this year. Um, So, yeah. Awesome. It has been so great to talk to you. Um, You were our 2018 Entrepreneur of the Year, and I think now people can understand why that is. Um, You you really have a great story about building a business, doing it locally, being transparent, taking advantage of opportunities. Um, And so I would just love to invite the community to come see this year's Capital Connects event. Again, it's on March 4th at Union Square at 4.30, and you'll hear from this 2020's uh, Entrepreneur of the Year recipient, and you'll also meet all the up-and-coming coming Ryans that um, are stepping out onto the stage to really showcase their business. So come network with local investors. Um, even if you're not ready for investment, this is a great opportunity to just be in the environment and begin building some of those business skills and come hear what some of the newest startups are shaken up in the triad. Um, register at... Um, 2020 Capital Connects tickets. and uh, again, Ryan, thanks so much. Thank you. Impact the Borough is sponsored by True Lion Federal Credit Union. As one of the largest credit unions in North Carolina, True Lion is proud of its work supporting the businesses and the people that make our communities thrive. Chartered in 1952, today True Lion serves more than 250,000 members helping them and our community build strong financial foundations. There are five locations in Guilford County to serve you. Visit truliant.org for more information. You can find all of our episodes on YouTube thanks to our video sponsor, North State. Impact the Borough is recorded at Press Play Studios inside the Greensboro Cultural Center. Producers are Brody Cohen Glaze and Holly West. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at GSO Chamber. See you next time.